the biggest event in college soccer, the most anticipated sporting match here at Cal Poly. And it's all taking place tonight as the Cal Poly men's soccer team will be taking on UC Santa Barbara. Hello and welcome to Mustang Game Day. I'm Francisco Martinez. And I'm Sydney Brandt. And the Mustangs are actually looking to change the turnout on the field tonight after they lost last time they played against UC Santa Barbara in the away game. This was actually before the Big West Conference play began. And now let's break that game down just a little bit. Uh, so the Mustangs didn't come home with the win, but they also didn't have a shutout either. We were fortunate enough to get a goal from, uh, it was a score of 3-1 to one in favor of the Gauchos, and that goal came from junior forward Angel De Leon in the 80th minute, and this actually happened when only 10 men were on the field. You want to talk a little bit about that? That's right. Earlier in the matches, three minutes before Colin Hyatt was sent off after receiving a second yellow card, resulting in a red card, but nonetheless 10 men on the field, but still having a goal as mentioned, shows very good what the Mustangs are able to do approaching the finish line. And now that we are at the finish line of this regular season, we are joined by men's soccer head coach Steve Sampson. Steve, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Obviously, huge matchup coming up with uh, UC Santa Barbara here at home. So our first question is, in your five years that you've been here at Cal Poly, you know, what has it been like seeing the progression of this blue-green rivalry to where it is tonight? Well, it's always been the biggest soccer rivalry in the country, and uh, tonight will be no exception. I think this rivalry has grown over the five years since I've been here. Uh, we've had sellout crowds every single time that we've played here at Spano Stadium, and uh, certainly the crowds at Santa Barbara have been outstanding as well. And what I like about the rivalry is that the quality of play between the two teams has really improved over the five years, and this year is no exception. This year, Santa Barbara has been ranked most of the year. Uh, they're ranked higher in the standings than we are, but both of us are going to be going into the Big West playoffs, and so it's a possibility we could actually meet them again at some point uh, after tonight. But uh, if we do our business tonight and get the, uh, the tie or the win, then we uh, most certainly will be hosting at home the following Wednesday. Definitely, and having that home field advantage tonight is so great. You know, obviously it's going to be a lot of people here, maybe a lot of tortillas coming on. Um, and in the last two home games that we've had, Cal Poly has actually won. So what is the mindset going into tonight's game? Well, first and foremost, uh, we're not going to play to tie. We're going to play to win. Um, I've always found that if you play to tie, you probably end up losing. So we're, the mindset is to play to win, uh, to put pressure on the, the back line of Santa Barbara, to win the first balls, to be able to maintain our rhythm in the midfield, to be able to create goal scoring opportunities early in the game, and to get that rhythm that we so desperately need offensively. Um, Santa Barbara comes into this game with a lot of tools. They have some outstanding individual players that we have to shut down. And certainly those individual battles and winning those battles is going to be key to our victory tonight. And I know that you mentioned earlier that Cal Poly has qualified for the men's soccer tournament first time since 2015. And we spoke earlier as the season was beginning about this being a goal. So now that the team has accomplished this, what is on the mind of the team now, especially? What has it been like for you to see this team play to this level and qualify for the tournament? Well, since 2015, I mean, we had a very young team in 2016. I think we had 10 freshmen on the team at the time. And so the, the idea was to give them a lot of experience playing some of the toughest teams in the country. And we had, we had done that by playing the likes of Notre Dame, Indiana, Maryland, Georgetown, Wake Forest, UCLA. And now those players are juniors and seniors. And so the, these guys are bringing that kind of experience to the game tonight. We hope that not only tonight do we win, but we go far into the Big West tournament and hopefully win the Big West so that we can represent Cal Poly in the NCAAs. Coach, tonight one of the players that we're featuring is Carlos Arce Hurtado, who has an incredible story, his journey from Mexico coming all the way, crossing the border just to come to soccer practice. What has it been like to see his growth and his dedication on the field, being such a key player for the Mustangs? Well, I don't think your listeners uh, or your fans know what how difficult it actually was for Carlos. You know, every single day for five days, sometimes six days a week, he would cross the Mexican border from Tijuana to come into La Jolla to train with the San Diego Nomads, uh, traveling all over the country and, and doing so well academically at the same time. I mean, he has really paid his dues. And, uh, you know, last year he didn't get a chance to, uh, to play much because uh, Simon Bohm, who was an outstanding goalkeeper for us for many years, um, and prior to that, Wade Hamilton, uh, they just didn't have an opportunity to see a lot of playing time. So he was able to get that play time in the spring. And he has shown so well, making some incredible saves uh, in so many games this year. Uh, I think he's earned that number one starting spot. And it's really a special story for him because of the dedication and commitment that he made when he was a young player. All right. Well, Coach, 
You're a busy man, so we'll let you go. <laughs> Thank you again for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you very much. Bye. Appreciate it. And when we come back, we'll have more Mustang Game Day right after this, so stick around and don't change the channel. We'll be right back. The Poly Plant Shop grows poinsettias annually, but this year the students are in an enterprise class rather than an enterprise project. This means the growing and maintenance of the poinsettias isn't completely dependent on students. When it's a project, it's a big responsibility. You're here all summer, you should be here during the breaks, and it's just all on you. The work on the poinsettias started in June, and the students expect to produce more than 2,500 flowers. Basically, we're doing graphical like tracking on how tall they are, so that way we know like whether they need more light or less light or to be spaced differently. Although the flowers are just starting to show color, by December they should be in full bloom. But red poinsettias aren't all the students are growing. That's what we really love to do here, okay. is to grow the assortment, and that's what our customers who come during open house love to see and buy. Some of the poinsettias are soft pink, red speckled with pink, and orange, among other varieties. Poinsettias will be sold at open house on December 6th and 7th at the Poly Plant Shop. We find the same people have been buying from us or from this project for years and years and years and years. Prices range from $5 to $50, depending on the size. $50 are something probably either that was started really early in June or maybe even left over from the year before mm -hmm. and taken care of all winter, spring through summer and made absolutely perfect. If you take care of them, poinsettias can show color for a long time. I really think you should get rid of poinsettias about a week after Christmas and buy new ones the next year. For Mustang News, I'm Lauren Wallachie. Well, there is no channel to change, but we are back here on Mustang Game Day. So, Sydney, obviously, this is a huge game with huge conference implications, especially for the Mustang. So, yeah, no, it's a huge game for Cal Poly. Definitely, and it's senior night, so some of the players are going to be recognized on the field before the game uh, kicks off at 5 o'clock. Um, so this is actually the last game of the regular season for the Mustangs, and a win or a draw in this game would secure the Mustangs a home match in the first round of the Big West Tournament, and this is the first time in, what is it, four years that yeah. we've qualified for these playoffs. Correct. It is the first time for the men's soccer program since 2015, Samson's first season. And let's take a look at the standings right now. As you can see, Cal Poly is just two points behind UC Santa Barbara. UC Davis and Irvine out of reach for first and second, respectively. So they will be getting buys in the first round, more likely than not. Uh, but yeah, this is a huge win for Cal Poly. And if UC Santa Barbara wins, then they'll get a buy. But honestly, this game really has huge implications for the postseason. Definitely. And Cal Poly's record at home right now is 6-2, and two, and they've actually won three out of the last four games. So they're going to have more momentum going into the field tonight, while as Santa Barbara is on a three-game winless streak. Um, the, the Mustangs have actually also only lost two of the last ten home matches against uh, Santa Barbara. So this is a very important game tonight that we're going to be seeing on the field. That's right. As Naz mentioned, two draws for UC Santa Barbara in that three-match winless streak. But Santa Barbara is a formidable team. They were once ranked as high as 12th in the nation. In fact, getting a draw, a 3-3 draw, against then number one ranked Stanford. So they definitely know how to play in these big match scenarios right here. And they did drop some matches against uh, Davis and Irvine, but they are still ranked 19th in the nation. So still a very tough team. But Cal Poly has won a match against a top 25 team against then number 24th ranked Loyola Marymount. And again, as you mentioned, senior night for the Mustangs, so it's going to be super exciting for a lot of the seniors on the squad uh, just to see them. And so uh, we're going to take a look at one of our standout players, Emmanuel Perez, in this package we've got for you. So take a look. I mean, I love soccer, but I'm just like a competitor. Like anything I do, I want to win like, so bad. Manny has uh, demonstrated leadership, his ability to hold the ball under pressure of the opponent, his ability to score great goals, uh, his timing to separate himself from the defender, um, to get shots off, his timing when balls are in wide positions to get inside his defender. Small, just always being competitive and wanting to do my best and like if there's, if you can win, to win, um, definitely helps me to keep that like attitude when I get on the field, even when things aren't going my way or the team's way, like, just don't give up, don't stop to the end and try to do your best and hopefully you come out the win. But the beauty of, uh, of Manny is that he's played in these games. He knows what these games mean. He knows the 
the feeling of it both playing away and playing at home. He knows the significance not only for us and for our season and, and for our points and our ability to host at home, but also how important it is for our fans uh, to want to beat Santa Barbara. And so he's going to go out there and, and play with uh, what I call controlled reckless abandon. <laughs> Motivation and like they're cheering you on and they get you to do that extra run, that extra tag one. You just want to score for them and win the game for them. Alonzo in the goal, Perez right there turning, shoots, fires in the goal! Emmanuel Perez, number nine! A great ball in. So like we said, Perez is going to be one of our key players tonight. And as you could see from that package, an incredible player on the field. And while he's a midfielder, Samson has actually said that he's been playing more up on the field. He's playing more offensive positions and a four game winning streak that he's had or four game winning games, I should say, goal winning games. Right. That is correct. And as you did say earlier, uh, been playing more up the field, having nine goals so far this season, co-leading the, uh, the Big West Conference. But that in turn has kind of caused uh, has kind of caused Emmanuel to be a marked man, if you will. A lot of the teams have been going after him. So really, it's just a question as to whether or not uh, he's going to be able to outmaneuver them. And essentially, because of the fact he is, all eyes are on Manny. That's all I'm going to say. And yeah. yeah, all eyes are on Manny. Yeah, definitely. So we're still a little under two hours away from the game, but after the break, our very own Francisco Martinez will be interviewing the family of Carlos Arce Hurtado. You won't want to miss that. Uh, stick around. We'll be right back after this. The Kin Coffee Shop is an establishment unlike the rest of our local coffee shops, from its dark aesthetics to its brewing methods. Owner Julian Contreras has brought his vision to fruition with the help of family, friends, and other local coffee shops. Having our friends help us uh, build things out in the cafe, uh, me and my two brothers painted the shop. We all put everything we had together uh, to make this happen for the community. The Kin offers customers with a variety of teas, matchas, mochas, and of course, coffee. If I want to do um, coffee, I want to do it right, and I want to make sure that it's consistent every single time while allowing myself to be completely inconsistent um, in our menu and trying a different uh, variation of drinks as well. The business aesthetics incorporated a dark atmosphere with the purpose of an intimate experience. Also, lower counters provide visitors and customers with a view to baristas' brewing processes. We want full um, visual with how we're making your drinks. Um, so you can ask questions or we can explain to you along the process of what it is that we're doing for you. I think in that sense, it kind of gives the customer a little bit more understanding as to what it takes to make the drinks that we make. The visual techniques are of old brewing methods, which consist of siphon coffee, also known as vacuum pot, which results in a clean and aromatic cup of coffee. Another eye-catching method is known as Kyoto, an overnight cold brew process, which uses pure ice water funneled through grounded coffee beans at a drip rate of one drop per second. The amount of care that went into sourcing and making the products that we have, it's people are so happy and they're so, so like stoked to get good coffee. And it's, it's also a lot of just a lot of fun. I'm Felix Castillo with Mustang News. Welcome back. We've got a little clip from junior defender Andrew Forth on what it means to have home field advantage, especially in a match like the blue-green rivalry. I think uh, home field advantage plays a huge part. Uh, we have a narrow field that suits our game. I think the energy is always really high when we play at home. And, uh, of course, the fans kind of drive us forward, especially you know, if we're down 1-0. I remember freshman year, go down early 1-0. We managed to score four past them. So I think the the crowd plays a huge part in us and it's just a mentality. The energy is just a major boost, uh, makes you want to run harder, tackle harder, jump higher. It's, uh, it's actually crazy because you don't hear individuals, you just hear loud noise, but when they're behind you, you just feel like you can do anything. 
So as we heard from Coach Sampson earlier, one of our uh, players tonight that we're going to be featuring is Carlos Arce Hurtado, who has an incredible journey um, from his start playing soccer all the way down in Tijuana, and he would travel all the way to La Jolla just for soccer practices, crossing the border, I don't know how many times a week. Um, and Francisco is actually going to be speaking with his family in a little bit. Uh, we just wanted to share a little bit about his journey and his impact that's been on the team. So take a look at this package. I feel like all soccer stories are crazy. Like if you heard some of the professional soccer players that talk about their when when they were young, they were a lot crazy. But yeah, mine has that plus that I had to go back and forth every day. I was traveling countries. Carlos has been playing truly exceptional soccer. Some of his reaction saves have been spectacular. Stopped there by Arce Hurtado. One of the most impressive things about Carlos is that he would drive and cross the border of Mexico from Tijuana and, and, and train in La Jolla five, six days out of the week. My morning will start going to school. I went to school from like eight to one. And then I had to start watching the, the line. So if there was no line, I could wait till like four. But if there were a lot of line, then I would just go to the border. The line will take me like an hour or two. Alonso, one of the, my friends here, he will pick me up at the border. Then we'll drive to La Jolla, and then I'll have my practice from five to seven. He drive me back, and then I'll walk through the border to Tijuana, and then my friends will pick me up. And at that time, that was like eight o'clock, so that was my day. And repeat that for five days. I started playing when I was like four. So like going to the stadiums and watching everything around the media, I was like, this is what I want to do for a living. Thank you. And then when I was really young, my family talked to me and they're like, okay, you want to do that. But there's like a million other kids that want to do the same thing as you. So what are you going to do? What's going to be different? So to be able to manage that whole process and the commitment to drive back and forth and to get your homework done and to get good grades and to be an exceptional soccer player. And that part of his character was something that I considered very, very strongly when I recruited him. There's some days that are tougher than others and sometimes I thought it was like, it was too much for me. But again, that thought that I had in my head that it was, this is what you want to do. And if you don't do it, make me, maybe you won't be able to make it. So that's something like motivates me and I keep going. You see the, the struggles that he had to go through, going to a foreign country with foreign language and stuff like that, having to learn like new dynamics, new like social skills, stuff like that. Seeing him like transition and sort of be able to be himself at the same time is pretty inspiring. I really believe that we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg with him. If he continues to grow at, at, at the pace that he is right now, I, I think he could literally become one of the best goalkeepers in the country. Of course, there's things I would like to like change, but you can't. And I don't want to be that kind of person who is just leaving the past and be thinking about what if I did something, what if this happened. Like, no, I'm not that kind of person. I'm the kind of person who looks forward and try to change the future. Like I don't, I don't wait for things to come. I, I look for them. Welcome back. Right now with me, I have Car the Arce Hurtado family, Father Francisco, Mother Silvia, and Sister Paola. So first off, welcome. Bienvenidos. Muchas uh, gracias por invitarme. Gracias. Uh, so our first question that we'll be asking is uh, for Carlos to play in the biggest uh, college soccer game in the nation. How does that feel? So uh, para Carlos, para verlo jugar en el juego más grande de todo fútbol universidad, de la universidad, ¿cómo se siente como familia en ver eso? Uh, estamos muy orgullosos por él porque es una de las metas que él quería hacer y poco a poco lo está logrando. Right, so he just said that it is, uh, they're very proud of him because it is one of his goals that he had and so little by little he's accomplishing his goals right there. Y so uh, our next question is, uh, uh, Carlos traveled across the border six days a week to watch, uh, to essentially train. So what was that process for you? So, uh, Carlos, uh, cruzando la frontera seis días a la semana para ir al entrenamiento, uh, para usted, ¿cómo fue, en, ¿cómo fue ese proceso en ayudarlo con, su, uh, con sus metas? Pues lo que me tocaba a mí era llevarlo a la línea, salía de la escuela, comía y rápido llevarlo a la línea porque había que, lo recogían acá de este lado para, para que se fuera a entrenar. 
y para él nunca fue un obstáculo, siempre como él tenía muy marcado lo que quería, a él no le importaba si hacía frío, calor, lo que fuera, él estaba listo para entrenar. Uh, so what she just said is that she was uh, essentially helping Car uh, take Carlos to the border, making sure that he was driving him there. And then after that, it wasn't necessarily an obstacle for Carlos or sort of a, a negative thing because he wanted to get there. He wanted to be at that level. So it was very something very important for him to do. Uh, is And so uh, Carlos obviously is wanting to pursue a career in professional soccer as a goalkeeper. So when he had that conversation with you initially, uh, how was that like? Uh, so cuando Carlos primero le dijo a ustedes que quiso, quiso ser arquero profesional, futbolista profesional, ¿cómo sintieron, cómo reaccionaron a ese, a ese gol que tuvo? Uh, siempre hemos este, apoyado a él para que jugara toda su vida. Dice, yo voy a ser profesional como sea. Eh, primero voy a tratar la escuela, pero su primer meta es ser profesional y a nosotros nos gusta el fútbol toda la familia, así que estamos apoyándolo todo el tiempo. So it was always a dream of Carlos to be a professional goalkeeper and obviously as well noting Carlos' uh, keys in school and doing well in school, but he's always wanted to be a goalkeeper since he was a little kid, a professional goalkeeper since he was a kid, and so they've always supported him along the way. So, uh, Paolo, uh, for you, like as Carlos' sister, you know, watching him play and like watching him feel like how is that like for you? Like, como hermana, como hermana de Carlos, ¿cómo se siente mirarlo jugar y mirarlo jugar a este nivel tan grande, especialmente en frente de casi 11,000 personas esta noche? Pues a mí me da muchísimo nervio verlo siempre y estoy súper orgullosa porque es el más chiquito. Entonces me da mucho orgullo este, verlo jugar y ver todo lo que está haciendo, que es lo que quería. Uh, so she's very nervous for the match, but she's very <laughs> proud of the fact that her brother is being able to play. And so she, she's just really happy that she's AI, he's able to do, uh, you know, what Carlos wants to do. Uh, y so, como, como persona, como obviamente conociéndolo como su hijo, as your son, que, what do you want the people to know about Carlos? ¿Qué quieres que el, nuestro uh, televidente saben sobre Carlos? Oh, que es, una, es un joven muy, muy estudioso, muy dedicado a a su persona, a, al fútbol, es muy personal. Sie siempre quieres dar una meta muy derecho. He is very direct, very professional, and always wants to have a goal. I, and so, same question for you. ¿Qué quieres que nuestros televidentes saben sobre Carlos? ¿Qué quieres que se enteren sobre su hijo? Que Carlos es una persona muy humilde, muy responsable, muy perseverante. Siempre trata de ayudar a los demás, no le importa cómo pero siempre está dispuesto a, a que todos estén bien si, es, si está a su, a su alcance. Entonces creo que más allá de ser un, bueno, obviamente mi hijo, super portero, este, es una persona muy, muy buena, muy humilde. Uh, she, uh, Carlos' mother wants to let you all know that uh, her, she believes her son is very humble and very dedicated and wants to ensure that the entire team he's on is able to succeed and able to thrive. So he will do anything within his reach to ensure that happens. Uh, and so my last question, ultima pregunta por ustedes. How excited are you? Just how excited, like knowing that this is the biggest game in college soccer across the country. What is that feeling like for you? ¿Cómo se siente para ustedes saber que este es el juego más grande del, pa del país de las universidades? Y por ustedes estar aquí mirando tu hijo en, como arquero. ¿Cómo se siente para ustedes? Bueno, yo muy nerviosa, <laughs> pero al mismo tiempo muy emocionada de ver que está en un, va a estar en un juego que él siempre soñó, siempre soñó en jugar en frente de miles de personas y ya se le hizo y ahorita creo que es el que más personas va a tener. Entonces, aparte del nervio, feliz, feliz de ver lo que está haciendo, lo que él quiere, por lo que él lucha todos los días. Uh, so, uh, Carlos' mother said that she was very nervous, but nonetheless she's very happy knowing that he is able to be at this level and know that he's doing what he loves and doing so, so well. So, uh, a la familia Arcevertado, le agradezco su tiempo. Thank you again for your time. Uh, we'll be going to a break and stick around. We have more Mustang game day right after this. Don't go anywhere. English professor Joel Westwood is helping students find means of transportation in San Luis Obispo by setting them up with a bike. Westwood has been collecting bikes for 20 years. He started his own bike library in 2002 after overhearing international students expressing an interest in owning bikes. And then they came back the next day with three Belgian students. Uh, and so the Belgians would like to see if they can have bicycles as well. And then it was, you know, uh, Tom from Australia needs a bike, and then the seven students from France need a bike. And largely it was word of mouth at the Valencia apartment complex. Now he has more than 160 bikes at his house. 
and he helps nearly 100 students get on a bike each year. If a student is looking for a bike, they can email or respond to Westwood's Craigslist ad with their height, weight, and ideal price. And so my aim is really to kind of, A, encourage students to, to cyclo-commute, uh, particularly in the kind of the radius where large percentage of the students you know, live around here, uh, and then kind of B, to kind of hope that the local community will kind of jump on board with you know, how cycling friendly it is in this town in terms Westwood says his ultimate goal is to get everyone who lives near campus on a bike at their time at Cal Poly. He is also passionate about cycling changes at Cal Poly and one day hopes to have two bike libraries available for students on campus. Starting with students who move into the dorms from out of state uh, should have an opportunity to get a bike uh, when they move into the dorms. Here's a key to your U-lock and here's a key to your dorm room. For Mustang News, I'm Maya McGregor. Welcome back to Mustang Game Day. I just want to give a shout out to Francisco. That was incredible to see all of us here. We're just really impressed. Was that your first time actually doing a bilingual translation interview live? Yeah, it was. That's so cool. So what was it kind of like? I mean, I couldn't hear the full thing, but what was it like talking to their family? Uh, they were just really nice and really sweet. They were, I mean, you could just tell, like, I mean, not even, like, you don't have to know Spanish to know that they were extremely proud of Carlos. Like, just hearing them just talk about all the things that, you know, they've done and, like, just you know, coming up the way here. They told me that they, you know, every single time they would be here for every single game, even if he wasn't playing. So just having that family supporting him, like he's absolutely lucky to have that, you know, that kind of a family. Definitely. And such a critical player to the team. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even in his one appearance last season, 10 saves, which is astounding. Outstanding. So anyways, we're going to take a look at some of our key players. We'll get to Carlos in a second, but let's take a look at some of our key players. Our key player right now, Emmanuel Perez. That's right, Emmanuel Perez, nine goals, three assists, leading the co-leading the Big West Conference, four of those goals, game-winning goals. And again, Steve Sanson mentioned earlier in an interview in our package about Emmanuel, he is a marked man. All eyes are on him. So it's just absolutely going to be interesting to see how this, how the UC Santa Barbara team approaches Emmanuel, how Emmanuel responds to whatever they have against him. Moving on to our second key player tonight is senior midfielder Diego Alonso. He will be recognized tonight for senior night, one of the seniors on the Mustangs. Uh, he's a captain on the team, so an important player. He's actually only had one goal this season, but uh, has had multiple assists, four assists this season. Uh, he actually leads the team in assists, and as you heard earlier this, in the show, um, he enjoys assisting rather than you know taking the opportunity to score for himself. So it really just shows that he is a team player. He's wanting to give people put oppor opportunities um, on the field. Absolutely, and Steve Sampson earlier did call him the backbone of the midfield, so you can see how that's been playing out and how that's been resulting in a good season for the Mustangs, having that backbone just be so willing and so ready to be ready to assist and ready to deliver goals. And our third key player of the match is Angel De Leon, a junior forward, three goals, two assists this season, and carries the second on team in points, which is a statistic combining assists and goals. He scored Cal Poly's only goal at the blue-green match in non-conference play on October 5th, in which they lost 3-1, but they did get that one goal with 10 men on the field against their Central Coast rivals. Definitely, and Samson, Coach Samson has actually described him as being somewhat of a reserved, quiet individual, but when he's on the field, you can really see him uh, come alive while he is, you know, he's a forward, he's up there where all the action is happening. Um, so definitely an important player on the team. Especially, and as mentioned, you know, Angel, being that lone goal scorer in that away leg of the Central Coast Derby. So it's going to be absolutely important to see if he's able to replicate that success he had last October against the Gauchos. Yeah, All right, so we'll be coming back. We'll be taking a break right now, but when we come back, we will have more Mustang game day. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You know, with all our freshmen class every year, you never really know what you're going to get. I think they are contributing more than I expected. Good stop, a shot on goal! We started playing together like our freshman year of high school and it just happened to be that we both kind of committed around the same time. I kind of knew she was deciding between Cal Poly and like other another school or something and she texted me and at that moment I think I cried. <laughs> I was so happy it was her. I like wouldn't want it to be anybody else. I think Kylie, no matter who we're playing, 
or whatever it is, no matter any other factor, she always shows up 110%. It's interesting because I, you know, you can tell they play club together because they often look for each other. It helps a lot that uh, we played on the same club team and coming here just on the field, I feel like we know how each other plays. And off the field, it's just so much easier coming into a new team with somebody that you already know. You know, not all players come in and, and fit a college program. They play a certain way in club, and what they do with that team and that system is really effective. And then you put them in a different system, and they're like a fish out of water. You're playing with girls that are like 21 compared to an 18-year-old freshman coming in. I think it's a lot more different, but it's something you have to adapt to for sure. Right now, it's more of like just like flipping that switch in my head to go into every tackle 110%. She was definitely a leader, and she was definitely one of the best players on the team. She always has been, and it's kind of just been like, <laughs> like she's always just, um, she's always been the person to like rise to the occasion. When it comes to like committing to college, it's kind of just like your own decision, not really about anyone else. So it just kind of worked out really well that me and Kylie got to come, like, come here together. All right, we're back. We are back. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Good. It's so quiet. It's weird. No one's here yet. No but one is here yet, but I can guarantee can you that by coming. match time, <laughs> We'll have 11,075 fans behind us in Spano Stadium. It's going to be one rowdy crowd. And one of the players who's going to probably thrive within that rowdy crowd is senior midfielder Diego Alonso. Let's take a look at a little more about the man in the midfield. I got a ball out of the, the box. And luckily, he got a deflection over the goalie. Uh, one one now. I think it was a great goal. I do think about those about that goal from last year and try to just try to get a goal this year again. You know, it felt so good just to score a goal last year, especially the winning goal. So doing that this year would be would be a blessing. And you know, it, feel, it feels amazing. I mean, I haven't made big uh, big West playoffs since I've been here. So I think it's. I mean, for me, it's it's huge. Um, we found out we made playoffs after the 2-0 loss to Irvine. So it was kind of bittersweet. Uh, for me, it's kind of unusual to say, but I, I like assisting more than scoring goals. Um, I'm a, pl a team player kind of guy, so I think feeding to my, to, to my teammates is a, is a big thing for me. It's a big confidence booster for me as well. Diego's been sort of a work in progress, you know, um, in the first two years uh, that I had him here. He was what I would call just a pure connector. Someone that has the ability to connect the back line with the front line or the right side or the left side. He actually has a good mind for the game and will see certain things from a tactical standpoint and share those things with me at the right moment and in a very respectful way. And so I think in his own way, he's been an exceptional captain. I'm a first generation student. Uh, my family's are immigrants from Mexico. So just doing this for my family and for my brothers that didn't have the privilege to play soccer and play for a, for a great school like this and just doing this for my family and for the people that have that have worked, worked for me and it's time, time for repaying back. Once again, that was Diego Alonso, one of our key players here for the Blue Green Rivalry game day. And if you guys can see behind us, the Mustangs have actually taken the field starting to warm up. We're still just under an hour away from kickoff, so the fans are starting to kind of waft in. And our very own reporter, Samantha Spitz, is live with one of those fans in the stands. Sam, what is going on out there? Yeah, guys, I'm out here. The team just took the field. You can see behind us, joining me right now, are two Cal Poly fans, Izzy and Whoa. Jerry. They're grad students. You guys are out here pretty early. We're like an hour about till game starts. Yeah. What, what brings you guys in so early? We just want to make sure we get the best seats possible because this is like the biggest game of the year, honestly. So yeah. We're expecting it to be fairly crowded, so we wanted to get here nice and early, you know. And what makes you guys most excited about this game? I feel like it's a little bit of a different atmosphere than we usually see. The school spirit is just so amped for this game. It's really fun just to be a part of a team and just like really root for our school. And the crowd is just always wild and excited for our win, so. And Jerry, I know this is your first UCSB game that you're coming to against Cal Poly. What are you most looking forward to? 
Um, I've heard good things. Uh, I'm ready for the crowd to get riled up because I'm trying to get riled up. Uh, that's about it. I'm trying to scream at the, the crowd, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jerry, tell me about your hair. Love this green color Definitely. you've got going. Thank yeah, you. tell me, is this just for the game or is it always green? Oh, I totally forgot that Cal Poly is a green thing. So, yeah, no, it's totally for the game. <laughs> it was my costume for yesterday. That was Cosmo. Wait, what was your costume for yesterday? Cos Cosmo. Oh, perfect. Well, the hair fits in perfectly with the game. Um, is there anything? What do you think makes this game so special to watch, Abby? Just because you've been to some, you know what it's like. I think it just makes everyone really close together. Like, we're all rooting for the same team, so everyone's just really excited. And since it's our biggest rival, um, we just all get even more excited. And so just the crowd cheering and everyone excited together, I think it just looks like a really fun experience. And I know I'm probably not supposed to ask this, but do you guys have any tortillas on you? We don't. I'm not risking that because I want to leave you I might ask my roommates to bring me some. <laughs> and do you have any memories from last year from the game? I know it's pretty crazy. Cal Poly won 1-0. What do you think is going to happen this year? Uh, it, I mean, I'm, I'm expecting us to win and then, you know, running on that field afterwards, which is just the best part. Everyone's just so pumped to getting my own field at the end. Oh, yeah. on the oh, dude, I'm down. I'm ready for this. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. And do you guys have a favorite Cal Poly chant, Cal Poly cheer, that you're maybe going to try and start during the game? No, uh, I don't usually do the chants, but I'm ready for the wave, and uh, usually I like to just kind of shout like, players' names and stuff when they do really cool stuff. What's the chant? Do you know it? Uh, I, I don't know the chant. I maybe thought you did. I don't usually start the chant. I've been here for five years, and I still remember the Cowboy chant, but I just get excited and like try and go along with it every time. So. Do you have any crazy memories from last year? Um, just, you know, all the tortillas being thrown. Uh, when you sit close to the front, you get some tortillas landing on your head, which is not always fun, but uh, you just kind of got to dust in case the tortillas hit you. Uh, yeah, it's so fun, though. I'm excited. Well, you guys heard it here. We've got crazy, excited fans that are ready. Thank you so much for joining us on Mustang Game Day, guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Happy day. A sudden switch from Shell to Speedway Express gas stations may have caught some San Luis Obispo residents' attention. Two Shell gas stations, one on Foothill and one on Santa Rosa, were previously owned by Endeavor, but were bought by an Ohio company, Speedway. It was basically a case of a bigger company trying to expand, so they bought a company that worked on the Shell, the Shell name, and they turned all the stores that were belong to that company into speedways. The main speedway right now will be located in Atascadero. The signage switch took place October 16th and was completed that same day. After the switch from the familiar Shell brand, the two stations noticed a loss of loyal Shell customers. Because uh, as of right now, we don't have a fuel rewards program, but it should be rolling out probably at the end of the year. I think they have a better fuel rewards program than Shell did. So as a consumer, I would say, wait for it, because it, be, it should be better than the Shell Fuel Reward Program. Speedway Express will soon offer their own rewards program, maybe even a better one than Shell, according to Marshall. The gas prices have decreased since the change and will continue to drop in the near future. With Mustang News, I'm Sydney Melton. Camera two. Welcome back. You can tell that the music is playing. Crowds are finally starting to file in. Spano Stadium is going to turn lively. And speaking of lively, we got one of the liveliest players on the pitch in junior midfielder Emmanuel Perez. Here's what he had to say. It's really like everything we've trained on, you have to really focus and know what you're doing because like what you said, you won't be able to hear your teammates talk to you even if they're screaming at the, as loud as they can and they're right next to you, you can't hear them. So you need to know your job and what the person next to you needs to be doing and be able to somehow either communicate with your hands or by body language because you won't have the time to hear your teammates. So the body language and just knowing your job and getting it done is the most important thing.
Joining us now is, for the first time, Zach Anderson Yochsheimer, Cal Poly's radio broadcaster for his very first Blue Green Rivalry. Thanks so much for being here with us. Thanks for having me, and you got the name right. I'm glad. I, yeah, of course. We're practicing. Yes, so. thank you. Practice thank you. perfect. Uh, so, what's it been like, not only for your first time this season, but to be covering the Blue Green Rivalry for your first time broadcasting? Well, it's been fun. I made the trip down to Santa Barbara to Harder Stadium. That was an experience in and of itself, but you have to experience both in Santa Barbara and in San Luis Obispo. And I can't wait to see what's supposed to be a sold-out crowd and once again make it in the record books for what could be the highest attended game in the NCAA this season for soccer. And obviously, you know, you being new to as, you know, Cal Poly's newest play-by-play uh, -play announcer. So what was the application process like? What was it like getting this job? Well, I heard there was an opening at Cal Poly. I was still a student. I graduated from Long Beach State with a broadcast journalism degree. And I needed a new job. And I needed to get a job, obviously, coming out of college, which is extremely difficult trying to get in the broadcast industry. I had a friend who said there's an opening and uh, I made the application. I made two trips up to San Luis Obispo from the Long Beach LA area and I barely won out I guess and I got the job and I'm happy to do so. You just have the application ready and have your reel ready as well. well. You can't really complain about the area that you're in? No, good weather. It's excellent weather. I live near the beach so it's like perfect weather every day. It's fantastic. And what's been the best part about your job so far? I'm sure there's been a big learning curve, but kind of what's been like the most exciting part that you've learned? I mean, just the community, how, how much they came out for volleyball, which I'm newer to volleyball, and it's been just fun loving growing with the team, doing men's soccer, women's soccer. I was just as hyped doing the women's soccer broadcast last night. Of course, this one's a big one, but last night was an overtime thriller, and it's just fun going each and every day doing the broadcast. Of course, this is the big one, but I love it all. All right, shifting gears back to this match in particular, you obviously covering all the games for the men's soccer team. In addition, covering that UC Santa Barbara game earlier. So uh, uh, your mic died, by the way, so I'll just give you this mic afterwards. Uh, so <laughs> got to love live TV. Anyways, so uh, what have you seen from both teams? What have you seen in Cal Poly so far this season? And what have you seen in UC Santa Barbara from the last time that they uh, went against the Mustangs? Well, both teams are dealing with a little bit of injuries, so Cal Poly got a little bit of injury bug, finally struck them at the end of the year. They had some injuries early on in the year, but they got over it. But then right before UC Irvine, they had a little bit of some injuries. And UCSB as well, they've been dealing with some injuries as well. So both teams a little banged up. End of the season, that's what you expect. And the blue-green rivalry, there's going to be a little bit more bumps and bruises. Santa Barbara, the dynamic offensive team, pretty solid defensively as well. Cal Poly a little bit more make and pick their choose their moments, but I think they can make their moment shine here at Spanos tonight. And we've definitely seen uh, throughout the course of the conference play, there's been a lot that's happened uh, with the soccer team. What have you kind of noticed stepping into this position, just the soccer team, the Mustangs overall? Well, for Steve Sampson this year, he went for an older, more mature, physically mature, mentally mature team. And after an 0-2 start, finding themselves at the bottom of the Big West standings, losing to what is now UC Riverside, the bottom of the standings to start off Big West play on the road, they, they've since matured, gotten some wins, had a three-game winning streak. That was since snapped last weekend, but they made their season turn around right when they needed to, and they made the moments count and finally got the road bug when they won at Sac State last week. And with this match in particular, it's a huge matchup at the front for both of these teams. Finn, Finn Ballard, McBride, and Manny Perez both leading the conference in goal scoring. So what can we expect to see from both of these players, and what do you think both teams will respectively do to try to inhibit their goal scoring opportunities? So for phenomenal Finn, as I like to call him, Finn Ballard, McBride, nine goals. He had a strike from deep at Santa Barbara to put that game away, make it 3-1 the final. So he can shoot from anywhere. The Santa Barbara can team, team can shoot from outside the box and score from deep. So that's something to look out for. But Ballard McBride, he's just a talent among himself. And Perez, for Cal Poly, he's come into his own this year. And he told me, he, he told me, a little sneak peek, if he scores, he might eat or bite into a tortilla. So look out for that if that, if that happens, hopefully. But, you know, look for both guys to get on the, the scoring ledger tonight. All right, Zach, so we have the home field advantage tonight. Last game that we played against uh, UC Santa Barbara didn't do so well. Uh, any personal predictions for the outcome tonight? As this blue-green rivalry always happens, I would say expect the unexpected. If it's a goal like last year here at Spanos with Diego Alonso's goal, a weird deflection that went in. For Cal Poly, they scored their first road goal this year on the road, down a man in the final 10 minutes and made that game pretty close for a moment there. So expect the unexpected. If you think it's going to go according to plan, it won't. Something crazy will happen. Tortillas, the fans, the goals. It'll be absolutely fun tonight. And you did mention earlier that goal scored with just 10 men on the pitch. So obviously I, sp I spoke to Samson earlier. He said that shows a lot about the character. 
Uh, what does that mean? You know, what does that mean to be able to score with ten men on the field down a person? And it was a weird thing at that time. The Mustangs had yet to score on the road at that point. No wins, no real results. They had a scoreless draw against San Francisco earlier that week prior to that match against Santa Barbara. And just scoring that goal didn't exactly turn around their season, but kind of got them over the hump to scoring goals on the road. And they since got a win at Sac State. And they finally were able to say, hey, we can score on the road and not have that in the back of their mind going into conference play. So a lot on the line tonight, a win or even a draw from the Mustangs would give us a home field advantage for uh, heading into playoffs. What do you kind of anticipate if that were to be the case tonight? I would expect to, they've played pretty well at home so far this year, but at the, ro the only road match they would play in Big West Tournament in the first round would be Sac State, which would still be a very favorable matchup. There are some tough matchups they could draw in the first round, but home field's always nice when they have to drive at least three hours to get here. And Spanos is always a rocking atmosphere, whether it's blue-green or if it's not. And I would think some success in the first round at the very least for the Mustangs come Wednesday. And uh, last question, you said to expect the unexpected for a match like this. So what is, this is going to be a little bit of a paradox question, what is the most expectable, unexpected thing we can see? Who do you think will rise to the top tonight? The, the expected would be Perez scoring once or twice and doing something. But for me, you got to look out for Spencer Held. He got, I would say, manhandled against Noah Billingsley in the first matchup. Spencer Held needs to have a good match. Doesn't need to score, but he would need to do something and just make his presence felt on the pitch in order for the Mustangs to win tonight. All right, Zach, thank you again for joining us today. And have a good call. Thank you again. Thank you very much for having me. All right, when we come back, we'll have more Mustang game day ready for you. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this very short break. Dogs. They are our four-legged furry friends who, for the most of us, brighten our days. This is Polly Pups, an official puppy raising club established last year that allows students to work with service dogs in training on campus. We have club meetings weekly on Wednesday nights and we kind of do a lot of different training for the dogs. So like tonight we practice verbal commands and hand signals. Um, our dogs have to readily accept when we tell them to do something, they should do it right away. And then once we help with their training and socialization and they're ready, they go back to guide dogs um, for their formal harness training where they learn proper guide work. Um, so that's kind of what our job is. We get to raise some awesome dogs to do something really neat for someone who is visually impaired. The club with six puppies in training and upwards of 50 members meets once a week to allow students to practice interaction and command exercises with the dogs. Fourth year ag business major Skylar Picanso is treasurer and a puppy raiser for Polly Pups. She gives some insight on the process of becoming a puppy raiser. It's actually not too strenuous so you have to first make three meetings in a row and you have to basically prove that you would be capable as a puppy raiser and um, you have to get your house checked to make sure you live in a suitable place for the dogs and puppy sit five nights and then you're good to go. It's as easy as that. After all is said and done, the goal of the program is to help the visually impaired be more independent. I think it's really important because we're making a huge difference. Um, people who are visually impaired, you know, they lose a lot of freedom because if they don't have a guide dog, they're using a cane or they have to rely on someone else to kind of guide them. And when you give them a working guide, they gain freedom and independence in their life. And if we weren't here doing the puppy raising portion, there wouldn't be guide dogs and that's something they would lose out on. And so I think it's really important because we're kind of giving them another chance at independence and freedom. This has been Brady Kasky reporting for Mustang News. Yeah, <laughs> you can take it. All right, so uh, up next, Andrew Robertson, one of Cal Poly uh, Mustang soccer players, going to talk a little bit more about the rivalry between the Mustangs and the Gauchos. Take a look. I mean, as players, it really just, you know, pushes us to play for us, but also for the fans, because we're really representing ourselves, our team, but our entire school, and we just really don't want to let anyone down, including ourselves and everyone on campus. We don't like them, they don't like us. Every time we play them, it's a battle, and it's the blue-green rivalry. They're the closest competitors, and we just got to show them what the Central Coast is all about. Uh, we, have, we have Sam Spitz, fans with Sam yet again. <laughs> Sam, what's going on? Who are you with right now?
See behind me, the students are starting to pack the stands. We've got UCSB students and Cal Poly students out here in the stands. If you look this way, you can see the team is starting to warm up. Cal Poly is getting ready. Behind me, the stands are getting full. We've got a pretty long line outside. Students are already getting here, lining up. Excited for the second. Um, there. Hopefully, Cal Poly can pull off a win today. We're going to toss it back to the anchors. Thank you for joining me. All right, Sam, looks like it's going to be an exciting game. We can definitely feel the energy. The music's booming. People are filling in as we speak. We're just uh, about 40 minutes away from a kickoff, and we're going to go over some of the three keys for success in tonight's game. And the first and the obvious is to feed off that home energy. Definitely having that home field advantage tonight is really exciting, not only for the soccer team, but for the campus in general. This is the most anticipated sporting event at Cal Poly, maybe on the Central Coast. I don't know. We can say that. It's always well, sold out. So. And in regards to feeding off that home energy, Cal Poly has only lost twice at home. So this game, match, whatever it is, this Spano Stadium is a fortress for the Mustangs. And the Mustangs need to defend that fortress, and they have 11,005 soldiers ready to defend it with them. It's really 11,005 against 11 when Cal Poly takes on UC Santa Barbara Definitely. here at Spano Stadium. And so we're winning gonna, those, well, the last two home games, we've won. So last I mean, two, number three, we can totally. And, 20, and in 2017, four to one, four to one, after Cal Poly went down in the first half, Cal Poly scored four unanswered goals against a good Santa Barbara team that year. So. This match has all on the line. Cal Poly is going to be going all in tonight. And let's take a look at our second key for tonight's match, play up. Uh, in regarding playing up to the level, there's a lot of things you can interpret play up. One of these ways is just playing up field, being able to have that momentum. Definitely having that offensive uh, approach as they're on the field and definitely having a lot of pressure on the Gauchos. You know, that's that's right, uh, Cal, uh, Cal Poly needs to be able to play man-to-man -man upfield essentially to ensure that they're able to uh, not let uh, Santa Barbara take advantage of any holes in the defense because if they do, it's going to be hell to pay. So for Cal Poly to be able to play upfield and ensure that there's no, no holes in their defense at all and if there are, to be able to get back up and get the counterattacks rolling and going, that'll be key to a Mustang victory tonight. And our third key of the match is to win the physical battle. Yeah, as we saw from uh, last game, obviously there's a lot of physical aggression, you might call it, some shoving, some elbows here and there. Uh, lots of red and yellow cards are on the line tonight. We saw that in the last game. Um, so it's, you right. know, it's all right. possible. A lot of physical action on the field out oh, there yeah, tonight. A lot of a lot, of, a lot of physical action. Last year we saw two red cards, one for Cal Poly and one for UC Santa Barbara as well. So obviously it's going to be a war out there. It's not a game. It's a war. Both of these teams hate each other, especially when they're here in Spano Stadium and at Harder Stadium as well. It is going to be a battle. It is going to be ferocious. It is going to be tenacious, exciting. There's so many adjectives that I could use but the one I could probably use, it's just going to be hell. It's going to be hell for both of these teams, and they're really going to want to claw out that win at the end of 90 minutes. And the fans, of course, you know, the tortillas and everything, I just think it's a lot. But, you know, we, the energy, I think, kind of just riles up everyone. So the energy is both on up. and off the field, there's a lot of head-to-head -head butting. <laughs> That's right, and we can see some of the Santa Barbara players slowly starting to make their way out. Now, you can't see them, they're not in our shop, but they are starting to make their way onto Spano Stadium. And so obviously this means we're getting very close to game time. And that just about does it for Mustang Game Day. A little over 30 minutes, Spano Stadium is going to be rocking come kickoff. And so are we. We're going to be covering it nonstop. So much coverage, and I'm excited. I know you're excited. I'm excited too. And it's been great to be here for, I don't know, this is your first game day of the season? First game day of the season yeah, for me. Same for Our first me, game days so. of the season and our first uh, goodbyes of the season yes, as well. Yes, I know. I'll be back for basketball. I'll be, ba I'll be back for uh, basketball too, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Anyways, thank you so much for watching Mustang Game Day. Uh, kickoff is going to be in just over 30 minutes from now. Uh, I'm Francisco Martinez. And I'm Sydney Bryant. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one.